the eruption at Honga Tonga Haipei will go down in history as one of the largest explosions in modern times. In fact, new details coming out showing the plume went up to 55 kilometers at its top and the umbrella capped out at 35 kilometers, much higher than previously reported. Now we're looking here at the Isle of Tonga and there is no activity at Honga Tonga Haipei, thankfully. But what do we do now? It's one of the highest stratospheric explosions in modern times and all stratospheric volcanoes have caused cooling on Earth, including Krakatau, Santa Maria, Agum, El Chicón, and Pinatubo, to name a few. And tonight, we're going to dive into what exactly that means with the data that we have. Now, the Pinatubo eruption went slightly higher at the umbrella than the Honga Tonga eruption, and the Tambora eruption peaked, the umbrella peaked at the high point. 55 kilometers. Now, the Tambora eruption caused a drop in global temperatures of over one degree C for one to three years, compared to the Pinatubo eruption, which caused a drop in global temperatures of 0.4 C, 0.5 C in some regions. And we think that the Honga Tonga eruption is going to be similar to Chikon or Agum or Krakatau and probably cause a drop down in 0.2 or 0.3 C. But this is just a guesstimate. And now today we know that Honga Tonga Haipei Volcano, the SO2 plume is reaching Madagascar and East Africa today. It had taken quite a while to travel across the Australian continent, but now is occupying most of the, the uh, material in the Indian Ocean and is just breached Madagascar and Africa today. So that is now, the plume is now over Africa and over Madagascar as we speak. So heads up there if you live in those regions. Now, as far as the shockwave is concerned, this is one of the most spectacular shockwaves in modern times ever recorded. Probably very similar to the Krakatoa eruption in 1880 that was heard worldwide, just like this one. So very similar eruptions in my opinion. But now we have modern uh, devices, and the Honga Tonga Haipei shockwave reached its antipode, so we know exactly where that is, uh, which is quite spectacular, and we they got some Chinese there. So if you're interested in that, all the links below of everything we discussed will be there. Now let's talk about the plume reaching 55 kilometers in altitude. That's absolutely spectacular. But before we get to that, what you're looking at is shots from the International Space Station of the ash covering the Earth. And first, I want you to notice the curvature of the Earth before we go any further. Enough said there. But this is one of the most spectacular ash plumes ever recorded on the space station ever witnessed by astronauts. So that's something else to be said about this eruption. It's absolutely unprecedented. Now, the National Center for Earth Observation, NERC in the UK, researches the exact height of the eruption plume, and they concluded something spectacular, that the top of this peak here was 55 kilometers. I don't know if you know how significant that is. This is just about 12 miles from space. Space is just right up here. That's it. That's how crazy this explosion and the eruption was, especially the cap here. Now, the umbrella still 24 miles up at 35 kilometers. That's like 20. That's absolutely unprecedented. So one of the largest explosions we've ever seen in modern times since Krakatoa and some of the most amazing satellite imagery. Now, they were assuming that the initial aerosol injections were only at about 28 kilometers. But now we have the information that it's actually that this main aerosol plume is much higher up here at 35 kilometers and that the peak of the dome is off the chart here at 55 kilometers. Look at how high the chart would have to be to get to 55 kilometers. It's way up there. So this was a great first pass, but it's certainly not the truth. And the truth is that they initially estimated 400 kilotons of SO2 at 28 kilometers. And we now know that the majority of the SO2 is at 35 to 55 kilometers, way different than the initial estimates. And we can compare this to Pinatubo, which had 
15 to 20 gigatons, which would be about 40 times this amount. So is this estimate correct? Probably not. It's probably pales in comparison to the actual number. And we're still waiting for information to confirm that it is much larger than we once thought. Now, we want to leave you tonight with some of the amazing footage of the tsunami damage in Tonga. And our thoughts and prayers go out to those that were in harm's way. So what we should glean from the whole package is that based on the amazing nature of this volcanic explosion, the height of the plume, and, and the fact that it is so unprecedented, the fact that there was limited loss of life, that we all get got to witness this. There was a Pacific-wide tsunami, which until this event happened, geologists thought that was not possible from an eruption around the EI-5 or 6, like this volcano. So everything involved in this geologic event is unprecedented and fantastic. Fantastic because there wasn't a lot of loss of life, very limited. There wasn't a loss of uh, there wasn't a lot of damage to homes or infrastructure, and we got to witness one of the most spectacular eruptions, which will cool the earth um, in real time. And that's a boom to knowledge. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our new subscribers, the 350,000 of you that watched the last video, thumbs up to you. And to all the heroes that shared this video, we love you. Hope you got something out of the video. Be safe. More coming soon. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit that like button.